Now, in this particular video of triggers, we will do some more operations like as I promised in the previous video, like we are going to cover the DDL triggers in this particular video. Along with that, we'll also perform some database and schema related operations like log on, log off things in this particular video. So let's get started with the practical implementation of the DDL and database or schema related triggers now. So in the context of DDL trigger, here I have created a trigger with the name restrict drop table or maybe drop any database object. For that, I have done is create or replace trigger with the name before drop means before the drop operation take place, I will execute this database, this uh, database trigger in order to stop that drop. All right. So before drop on database means I'm just saying drop means you cannot drop any database object. All right. So here you can see in the beginning and end, I have just read an error with this error code with the message cannot drop table. I should not say table. It's about any database object cannot perform drop operation on this database, something like that. All right. So here the table is a trigger is created. Now let me try to drop any table like TBL employees as it's saying cannot drop table from this database. All right. Let's try to drop something which is not table. Let's say a view EMP data. All right. And here it's saying cannot drop table from this database. All right. So that means I cannot simply drop anything in this particular table in this database. All right. Now let's start working with the log on or log off uh, triggers as well. So for storing the details, what I have done, I have created a table here called login details. All right. So let's check the structure. All right. So in this login details table, there are three columns login ID means the current username. I want to store in that login time means along with the date and time. And here is the action. All right. So whenever something will take place, I will uh, just try to store that. All right. So now let us start working with the log on and log off triggers. And in that context, I have created a table here called login details where there are three columns login ID, login time and action. All right. So here in the login ID, the current username will be stored and login time. I will actually put the date and time and action, whether it's login or log off. So whenever some login or log off take place in the current schema, I want the details should be stored in this table. So for that, I will have to write a couple of triggers. One is for log on another one is for log off. So let's try that. So here you can see the first trigger which I have created create or replace trigger login trigger the name after log on. All right. After log on means I cannot do anything before login in. Right. So as soon as the login is done after that on schema begin end, I'll just write a command insert into this table user in first column user will put the current username sys date. All right. Sys date will put the uh, date. I should have used to care to convert that. Okay. I'll do that later. And uh, in third, I will put login. All right. So the action will be login. Similarly, in the another trigger, create or tri replace trigger, log off trigger before log off, because I cannot do anything after log off. All right. So before log off on the current schema, again, I want to put the same thing. So let's execute that and let's try to disconnect from the current database. And let's try to log in. All right. Again, let's try to disconnect. Let's again connect. All right. So let's check the data inside this login details. Select asterisk from login details. All right. So you can see system is the login ID date. It's just showing the date. Let me do the changes out there. So first I did the log off, then log in, then again log out, then again login. All right. So let me just make a change in the triggers definition. So now I have made the changes in the trigger definition. Like here I use to care function and I have just converted into DDMMYY for the date and then hours, right? Like HS24, MI and SS. All right. So let's again do the things like log out. Let's say disconnect. Connect. All right, let's do it once more. 
All right, so let's again come to the database to check the data uh, data in my table. So login details. All right, now here you can see the date and time both are coming. All right, since it was very frequent, so not much gap in that. So this is how you can start working with the DDL triggers along with the logon and logoff triggers.